Hello, I'm Chris Thompson, and today uh, with Investor Intel, and today I'm here with uh, Eric Sloan, the Chief Revenue Officer of the Neil Exchange. Uh, for those viewers who may not know your company, can you provide just a quick overview of the Neo Exchange? Of course, Chris, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, the Neo Exchange is Canada's second tier one or senior stock exchange headquartered out of Toronto. We've been around and in operation now for just over six years, and we're backed by some of the largest buy side pension plans, asset managers, and larger sell side banks in the country. Do you target any sort of a sector or industry? Great question. Like from a, a listings perspective, we've expanded our Neo Exchange corporate listings roster to include a, a number of different sectors now. We've got a, a number of the larger players in the US cannabis space listed on Neo, and, and more recently over the last 12 months, a number of clean tech, technology, and uh, otherwise biopharma focused organizations, what you may hear us refer to from time to time as the innovation economy of Canada now listed with NEO. Is there a reason why a company might cho choose the NEO exchange over another one of the Canadian exchanges or US exchanges? I think there's a, a few very important nuances to consider when contemplating a, a go public in Canada among choosing the right partners. An exchange too can also be a very important part of that decisioning process. Canada in fact only has two senior exchanges. TSX and now NEO. Uh, for companies that are suitably qualified, meet listing requirements, they finally have a choice not dissimilar to what US companies have been enjoying for decades between NYSE and, and NASDAQ. So that competition, we feel, brings the best out in, in everybody's capabilities. And from a NEO perspective, I think there are three key advantages that uh, any company may wish to consider. One, you know, service-oriented partner, somebody who's prepared to be a part of that journey and help a company uh, meet their deadlines and, and dates, to bring high quality partners to the table to help companies figure out how to make that capital markets uh, announcement a successful one. And then the third one, which I actually think is the most important, it's not just about the go public journey, it's what happens afterwards and sharing intel and helping companies tackle their capital markets issues, data, intelligence on a go forward basis. Interesting, uh, your, uh, your name has popped up on my screen recently for a couple of new products that have come across uh, uh, into the market. One is uh, what I, I see you call as the CDR, which is the American version of the ADR. Can you just explain a little bit about that for people who don't understand uh, what the importance of that is for Canadians? Of course, and I think personally, this is one of the most innovative product offerings that has ever hit the Canadian market. If you think about it today as a Canadian investor, you want to buy a US global stock, pick the one that's out in market right now with Amazon.com, or you want to buy Facebook or Google or Netflix. You've got a few barriers to entry, so to speak. You can log into your bank account. You've got to do a currency exchange, FX. You're going to pay for that to flip from Canadian dollars in your investment account to US dollars to go and buy those stocks on a US exchange. You're also buying pretty expensive stock. Amazon, yeah. as an example, is $3,600. <laughs> and uh, for an investor trying to make an investment decision, that, that can often be your entire uh, allocation to a, a US company and now in, in one name. And, and the third, of course, and, and the thing that I think is truly disruptive and different from the traditional depository receipt market is the introduction of a Canadian dollar hedge. So as an investor, when you buy a US company, you actually own two things. You own the company stock and you own the currency in between. Yeah. Works in your favor sometimes, doesn't work in your favor in others. Until now, until CDRs, there's never really been a good option to help Canadians buy abroad. CDRs are available in Canadian dollars. They're listed on Neo. Our first one out is Amazon.com. They become available in fractional shares. You can actually buy one two hundredth of a share of Amazon stock in CDR format for twenty-two dollars. I think is the current market rate. And third, it comes with a hedge. So the the tagline that we've put out into the market in concert with our, our partners at CIBC, who came up with the innovation behind CDRs and over the lucky beneficiary to list those with NEO uh, is own the company, not the currency. Yeah, that, that's important sometimes, especially in this market. Uh, the other one that popped up on my screen is uh, the SPAC, the Canadian SPAC version. Uh, what can you comment about that? 
Absolutely. Uh, SPACs have been all the rage in the US. Uh, you've seen hundreds of these things go out on an annual basis as companies look for alternative ways to go public. Uh, the SPAC market is actually a very interesting one. Spend, spend some time, educate yourself on it. In short, it's a blank check company, sometimes referred to as, as a SPAC as well, where investors put their money into a, a blind trust that is seeking a company to take public that is currently private today. Uh, typically, SPACs are large, a couple hundred million in money sitting in escrow waiting for a transaction. NEO has been the listing exchange of choice for 10 SPACs in Canada now, uh, most of which have been focused on the U.S. cannabis space. But when you think about the size of a SPAC, our NEO listed SPACs are 200 million plus market cap as well. That is often too big for a lot of the really interesting companies in Canada. It might make sense in other markets, but, but here, maybe not as much. Yeah. We wanted to come up with a vehicle, and it's called a, a G Corp or a growth corporation. That's effectively a, a mini SPAC. We've found a way through a, a pilot program uh, with the Securities Commission to launch these smaller mini SPACs that can be as small as 5 million, around 30 or 40 million at the top end. We, we think 15, 20 million is likely where they'll end up. And it just creates this bigger ecosystem of private companies that these smaller SPACs can out target in a go public transaction. Interesting. So as an investor, uh, you know, where can I find uh, information about companies that are trading on, on your exchange? Uh, there's, there's a few really good answers for that. I mean, the first and foremost, we've worked hard over the years to make sure that NEO listed companies, all of our exchange traded funds, CDRs and SPACs, are all accessible in your regular investment channels. So every bank discount broker, every wealth manager and advisor, uh, your do-it-yourselfer accounts at Quest Trade, Q Trade Investor, Well Simple Trade, they all actually trade neo listed securities. And the only thing you'll notice as an investor that's different, there's usually a little tagline at the bottom that says listed on. Most of the companies you're probably familiar with, you know, with, with our, uh, our competitor across the street, but you'll now start seeing more that say listed on NEO. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for a more broad-based uh, database, your usual habits, Yahoo Finance, Apple Stocks, all carry neo listed securities, our own website, probably one of the better ones for real-time streaming depth of book market data, all available for free to investors. Well, that looks very exciting. I look forward to uh, looking that up. Uh, as an investor myself, I, I always look for alternative ways of making investments. Uh, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up myself. So uh, thank you for your time today. Um, Appreciate it. And, and this is uh, Chris Thompson uh, with Investor Intel uh, speaking with Eric Sloan, the Chief Revenue Officer of the NEO Exchange. Thank you. Have a great day. Pleasure, Chris. Thank you.